There's lots of things about your life that you know aren't right, that you could fix, but you won't. Who knows why? You don't have the discipline or the vision or the courage or, 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 or the integrity of character or the maturity or God only knows the reasons. But there are some things that you're doing wrong or not doing that you could fix, that you would fix. And you have to sit and, and, and ask. And, and I think it's the reflection of the New Testament idea that if you knock, the door will open, you know, and if you ask, you will receive. It's a very interesting line because it, 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 it sounds like something that's naively optimistic. It sounds like it's representing God as, you know, the grantor of wishes in some sense. But I don't believe that's what it means at all. I, th I think what it means is that if you actually want to know something, and you actually want to devote yourself to something, if you're willing to make the proper sacrifices, right, and reorient yourself, that you can move towards what you're aiming at. And I can tell you that if you ask yourself in all humility how it is that you could be better and what you could do in a small way to move in that direction, that first of all, you will receive an answer about what you're doing wrong, it's not that much different than thinking. We don't regard that as particularly miraculous. Like you could ask yourself a question and come up with an answer. But if you ask yourself a question about how it is that you're lesser than you could be and what you could do about that, you'll find out. And then if you do that, then you won't be lesser and that works. And it, it, it's a nice form of humility as well, because what you're going to find out if you ask that question is it's not going to be something you're proud of. It's going to be some little rotten element of your character that you're ashamed of in 15 different ways and, and for good reason. And even the attempt to triumph over it isn't going to be something that you're going to be able to trumpet proudly to your friends and your family, because, you know, to fight off something that's shameful is a private affair in some sense, but you can do it. You, you can't be doing that because you want to be a good person in some sense. And you can't be doing that because you want to be seen as being a good person. That's not the right attitude. You have to be doing it because it's the transcendently right thing to do. It's the thing that you do if you aim at the highest possible ideal. And, and the other thing that's so lovely about that is you're not going to do anyone any harm. You know, if you find out something that you're lacking, if you discover something you're lacking, well, first of all, great, you've discovered something you're lacking and you need that thing you're lacking because life is difficult. It's going to call everything that there is out of you. And so you need that thing that you're lacking and then you can work on it incrementally and, and humbly, you know, humbly meaning you can work on it in the way that someone as flawed as you could work on it successfully. And then, and then you, and then it works. And then things get better. They tend to get better and better. And so that's very practical and, and very much in keeping with psychotherapeutic practice and wisdom. And, and I would say, you can have what you want and need, assuming you're taking care of yourself, right? Assuming that you're, you're starting out with the proper attitude towards yourself, which is that you're worthy of care and respect and, and there's something to you that, that's valuable that at least could be developed. You need to give yourself that amount of credit, like, like you would with anyone that you might be willing to attempt to care for and love. And then the next question is, all right, you can have what you want, but you have to specify it. What would you like from your friends three to five years down the road? What would you like your friendship network to look like? Well, how would you like your career to, to shape itself? How are you going to take care of your family? And then what about children and a, and a, and a, and a long-term mate, a wife or a husband? What are you going to do with your time outside of work that's useful and engaging and meaningful and productive? How are you going to take care of yourself mentally and physically? And how are you going to withstand temptation so that it doesn't take you down in the particular way that temptation might take you down? You have what you need and want to, to make your life what it needs to be so that you can be a good person in, in the face of the suffering of life. 
what does it look like? So you wake up in the morning, your consciousness reemerges on, on the stage of existence. And what you're confronted by is the potential of the day. You, you see the day as a, a set of possible pathways. You could do this, you could do that, you could not do this, you could not do that. And, and, and your conscience speaks to you too, almost immediately, I would say, upon awakening. Here's something I need to do today to keep things in order. Here's something I need not to do today to keep things in order. Here's my, ob my set of obligations that I need to undertake so that when I go to sleep tonight, I can sleep with a clear conscience and things are better than they might have otherwise been. And so what you see in front of you is the potential of the world. And consider for a moment the multitude of your faults and the direction those faults could pull you in. And everyone knows that. Everyone has a sense of how they would fall apart in their own particular manner, with their own particular weaknesses. It's, and so now you have something to aim at. You have a purpose, right? And, and that, that's motivating the, the part of the human being that leads us to redemption is the part of us that dies when it's in error and is reborn as something better and new. And I, I think that's true practically and scientifically and metaphysically. It's true at a, every level of existence. No one knows enough to be certain of anything in some sense. And what you do as you pursue the adventure of your life, if you do pursue it, is to wrestle with those questions of ultimate meaning. The positive element of the idea that it's those who wrestle that are already the chosen people is it's, it's such a lovely idea because it means that despite our doubt which is inevitable i believe the fact that we're willing to contend with that doubt and to move forward in our lives already puts us on the right track